Grace and peace, everyone. Welcome to the Christ Fellowship Baptist Church Sunday School Meeting, where our pastor is the Reverend Dr. David L. Kelly II. My name is Dolores Gerald, and I'm your facilitator for this meeting. We meet every Sunday morning at 9.30 a.m. If you would like more information about our church, please visit our website at www.ChristFellowshipBaptistChurch.org. Our lesson today is titled Justice, Judges, and Priests. It is taken from Deuteronomy 16, verses 18 and 20, and Deuteronomy 17, verses 8 to 13. So get your Bibles out and let us pray. Father God, in the mighty matchless name of Jesus, we give you glory, honor, and praise. We thank you, Father God, for a brand new day, for the brand new mercies in this day, for your grace that goes before us and your peace that pursues us. Father, we thank you. We thank you for life, health, and strength. We thank you for eyes to see and ears to hear and hands to do and feet to go and the breath to say thank you. Father God, we ask right now that you forgive us of anything that we've said or done or thought that wasn't pleasing in your sight. Oh, Father, renew our hearts and our minds in your word. Father God, wash them in the water of the word that we might walk in your will and walk in your way and walk in whatever it is that you would have us to do, that we may be obedient to do your will. Father, I ask right now that you come in the midst meeting right now. I ask right now that you bless every person who thought it not robbery to get up and come and seek your face this morning. I ask right now a special blessing on them, on their families, Father God, on their church families, and on their pastors. Father, a special blessing on every pastor represented here. A special, special blessing on my pastor, the Reverend Dr. David L. Kelly II. I ask, Father God, that you gird every man and woman of God up on every week and lean inside for that you put your hedge of protection all around them as they go about doing the work that you've called them to do in the vineyard. Father God, I ask that you pour into them all and then some to overflowing of what they pour into us, that they may continue to grow us and, and sit and keep us close to you. Father, we ask right now in the mighty matchless name of Jesus that you hide me behind the cross that I might not be seen. Holy Spirit, you stand up and do the teaching. I will sit down. I've done the preparation, but I'm not always able. And so I ask that you use me as your mouthpiece and that you prepare every heart, every eye, every ear, every mind, every spirit to receive whatever it is that you Holy Spirit has for us today. And we ask all of these things in the mighty matchless name of Yeshua, Jesus, our King and Messiah. Amen, 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 amen. Uh, Latanya, unmute yourself so you can read for us, please. You shall appoint judges and officers in all your gates, which the Lord your God gives you according to your tribes, and they shall judge the people with just judgment. You shall not pervert justice. You shall not show partiality, nor take a bribe. For a bribe blinds the eyes of the wise and twists the words of the righteous. You shall follow what is altogether just, that you may live and inherit the land which the Lord your God gives you. If a matter arises which is too hard for you to judge between degrees of guilt for bloodshed between the judgments that between one judgment or another or between one punishment or another matters of controversy within your gates then you shall arise and go up to the place which the Lord your God chooses. And you shall come to the priests, the Levites, and to the judge, sorry, and to the judge there in those days and inquire of them. They shall pronounce upon you the sentence of judgment. You shall do according, you shall do according to the sentence which they pronounce upon you in that in that place which the Lord chooses and you shall be I'm sorry <clears throat> and you shall be careful to do according to all that they order you 
according to the sentence of the law in which they instruct you, according to the judgment which they tell you, you shall do, you shall do, you shall not turn aside to the right hand or to the left from the sentence which they pronounce upon you. Now the man who acts presumptuously and will not need the priest who stands, sorry, who stands to minister there before the Lord your God or the judge that the man shall die. So you shall put away the evil from Israel and all the people shall hear and fear no longer act presumptuously. Amen. Thank you so much, Latanya. Thank you so much. Yeah. Whew. Our lesson today takes place on the banks of the Jordan River, just before the children cross over to take possession of the land promised to Abraham by Yahweh. Moses reminds them of who they are and gives them last minute instructions to guide them on the rest of their journey of conquest and to life beyond the river. In the book of Deuteronomy, Moses gives 18 reminders to the children of Israel that the land they were going to was a gift from Yahweh. They weren't buying the land. They were just going in to possess the land. The land belongs to Yahweh. They were to be managers and stewards of the land. They were told in Deuteronomy 6 verses 16 to 18, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. You shall diligently keep the commandments of the Lord your God, his testimonies and his statutes, which he has commanded you. And you shall do what is right and good in the sight of the Lord, that it may be well with you and that you may go in and possess the good land, which the Lord swore to your fathers to cast out all your enemies from before you as the Lord has spoken. In other words, obey Yahweh and have peace. Disobey him and be dispossessed. And all the commands that the children of Israel were given, the most important one to Yahweh, the one that kept the blessings flowing and the wars at bay so that they would live in peace was Exodus 20 verses 3 to 6. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image. You shall not bow down to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing mercy to thousands, to those who love me and keep my commandments. And in Deuteronomy 6, verses 14 and 15, there was the morning, warning from Moses concerning this same command. You shall not go after other gods, the gods of the people who are all around you. For the Lord your God is a jealous God among you. Lest the anger of the Lord your God be aroused against you and destroy you from the face of the earth. In other words, serve Yahweh and receive mercy. Serve other gods and receive retribution from Yahweh. <laughs> and then in Deuteronomy 28 verses 15, verse 15, Moses warns them again. But it shall come to pass if you do not obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commands and his statutes, which I command you today, then all these curses shall come upon you and overtake you. And then in verses 16 to 44, there's a long, long list of curses, right? And then in verse 45, he says, moreover, all these curses shall come upon you and pursue you and overtake you until you are destroyed because you did not obey the voice of the Lord your God to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded you and then verse 47 says because you did not serve the Lord your God with joy and gladness of heart for the abundance of everything in other words serve and reverence Yahweh he gave the commands he was to be obeyed. And if not, Yahweh would get angry. They would be cursed and forfeit the blessings and the peace obedience brings. That was to the people at large. I want you to notice that the thing that's running through there is that they got to obey the Lord. Okay. Follow his commands. All right. There was a warning to the judges from Moses in Deuteronomy 1 verse 16 and 17. 
It says, hear the cases between your brethren and judge righteously between a man and his brother or the stranger who was with him. You shall not show partiality in judgment. You shall hear the small as well as the great. You shall not be afraid in any man's presence for the judgment is God. Ultimately, the judges were administrators for Yahweh to the people. They were to adjudicate for Yahweh in all matters of dispute. This lesson is a follow-up to last week's lesson. We'll be looking at the role of judges and priests in Yahweh's judicial system and the charges he gave them concerning judging the people. All right. Deuteronomy 16 verse 18. You shall appoint judges and officers in all your gate, which the Lord your God gives you according to your tribes, and they shall judge the people with just judgment. You shall not pervert justice. You shall not show partiality, nor take a bribe, for a bribe blinds the eyes of the wise and twists the words of the righteous. You shall follow what is altogether just that you may live and inherit the land which the Lord your God has given you. Amen. Last week, we learned about apodictic and casustic laws. Apodictic laws are absolute. They start with you shall or you shall not. They are always in effect and are always to be followed. Casustic laws are used on a case-by-case -case basis. They are applied to specific situations or circumstances. The commands in these verses are apodictic laws. The first is, you shall appoint judges and officers in all your gates. The King James Version says, you shall make. This phrase is one word in the Hebrew, and it means to set up, or designate, or establish, or assign. These judges were usually the elders who sat at the city gate, judging disputes presented before them for adjudication. Integrity, honesty, and impartiality were necessary characteristics of the elders who judge these disputes. And the word gates refers to the entrance or the marketplace of a city, town, or village. So the Israelites were commanded to designate and appoint overseers or judges in every town, city, and village that they would possess in the land that Yahweh, their God, was giving them. Now I want you to keep in mind, they were leaving the wilderness where they lived in tents group themselves according to their tribes all around the tabernacle of the tent of me or the tent of meeting there was four and one tribes on one side four on another four on this side four on that side or three or whatever it is and each one was at the east the west the north or the south around the tabernacle they traveled that way okay and so now they were leaving the wilderness and where yahweh supplied it there every need he supplied everything for them as it states in nehemiah 9 verses 20 and 21 where he says you did not withhold your manna from their mouth you gave them water for their thirst 40 years you sustained them in the wilderness they lacked nothing their clothes did not wear out and their feet did not swell that was the blessing of the lord the 40 years they were in the wilderness they were leaving the wilderness to go, as it says in Deuteronomy 6, 10, and 11, to large and beautiful cities, which they did not build. Houses full of all good things, which they did not fill. Hewn out wells, which they did not dig. Vineyards and olive trees, which they did not plant. They were going in to a ready-made land. So when they arrived in this land, Every place where a group of 10 or more families live would have a public place where commerce was conducted. That's what usually they do when they set up a city or town and where the elders would convene. In that place is where disputes would be heard and adjudicated. It is referred to as gates because most cities and towns had a wall around it that was entered in by the gate. These judges were to be appointed from each tribe for that tribe. And the judges were admonished to judge the people with just judgment. The word judge means to govern or execute, defend and deliver. The word just means rightness, righteously or righteousness. And the word judgment means discretion in decisions of law, ordinances and disputes. So the judges were charged to execute their duties with rightness and use discretion when applying decisions based on the law. The next law was you shall not pervert justice. 
The King James Word uses, uses the word rest, which means to turn aside or incline away from or decline, which, or, which means to deny or to bend or to bow or with, towards corruption or influence or hold out or extend, which means to delay or thrust aside or thrust away, which are all, every single one of them, perversions of justice. And this was strictly forbidden by Yahweh. And the next law was, you shall not show partiality nor take a bribe, for a bribe blinds the eyes of the wise and twists the words of the righteous. The King James Version says, you shall not respect persons. God is no respect of persons. The word respect here in Hebrew means acknowledge, to regard or esteem with honor, or pay special attention to. That's also the description of partiality. James 2 verse 9 says, but if you show partiality, you commit sin. And are convicted by the law as transgressors. They will be considered wicked because they have perverted or twisted true judgment in favor of something that was false. Those judges' findings and the execution of the judgment according to those findings would lead to an innocent or righteous person being wrongly executed or wrongly judged. The judges were forbidden to take bribes or gifts or any kind of reward or gratuities from anyone. Why? Bribes could or would influence their decisions and adjudication. It could cause them to overlook pertinent information or evidence, which would then cause a perversion of justice. And a perversion of justice is a twist towards corruption of the words of the righteous. The next law is a summary to all of the to the charges of all these judges. It's a summary of everything that we just went through. And it says, you shall follow what is altogether just that you may live and inherit the land which the Lord your God is giving you. It gives them directions to do what is right and reminds them of the blessing and the gift to them by Yahweh for obedience. Amen. Any questions about what I covered so far? Any questions? Okay, now we go oh, to do so you're moving around because you're breaking up. Am I breaking up? I'm sorry. Let me just check something real quick. Are you moving around, Lois? Because you're breaking no. up. No, I'm not. All Mr. right. Lois, you're breaking up. Uh oh. Is that me? Not on my end. Or maybe on it's my you. And I hear you clear. Yeah, clear. Okay, then maybe it's you, Nisi. All right. Okay, I'll check on my end. Sorry. All right. No problem. Okay. Deuteronomy 17 verses 8 to 11. <clears throat> 8 to 8. 8 to 11. I'm read that now. If a matter arises which is too hard for you to judge between degrees of guilt for bloodshed, between one judgment or another, or between one punishment or another, matters of controversy within your gates, then you shall arise and go up to the place which the Lord your God chooses. And you shall come to the priests, the Levites, and to the judge there in those days, and inquire of them. They shall pronounce upon you the sentence of judgment. You shall do according to the sentence which they pronounce upon you in that place which the Lord chooses. And you shall be careful to do according to all they order you, according to the sentence of the law in which they instruct you, according to the judgment which they tell you, you shall do. You shall not turn aside to the right hand, or to the left hand from the sentence which they pronounce upon you. Amen. Now, this command goes back to the advice that was given by Jethro to Moses when the Israelites were camped at Mount Sinai. Um, the, the instructions that he, the advice that he gave him that was approved by Yahweh when judges were put over the people. All right. At first in Exodus 18, 21 verses. Exodus 18, 21 to 22. <laughs> when Moses told. Moses was told, moreover, you shall select from all the people, able men, such as fear God, men of truth, hating covetous, covetousness, and place such men to be rulers over the people, be rulers of thousands, rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, and rulers of 10, and let them judge the people at all time. Then it will be that every great matter they shall bring to you, but every small matter they themselves shall, ju shall judge. And that's the same premise that was given to them in order to set up their judges in their cities and towns. All right. I was going to ask um, who who chose the judges. Well, that's that. 
Yeah. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Because if you remember, I'm going to go back. But if you remember in Exodus, there were 70 elders that were chosen to judge with Moses at that time. And the Lord told him to bring them to the tabernacle. And he would take some of the spirit that was on Moses and place it on the elders so that they could give righteous judgment in the name of the Lord. So these judges would be endowed with the spirit of the Lord in order to give right judgment. That's one of the first instances of the Holy Spirit resting on somebody in order for them to do the work of the Lord. Okay. Now, um, right here, Moses is instructing them that if a matter arises, which is too hard for you to judge, they are to take it up to the next level of authority. They were to get up and go to the nearest Levitical city and bring the matter before the priest, the Levites, and the judge there. Remember, Deuteronomy 117 says, for the judgment is God's. For this reason, the judgment that is pronounced is considered to be from Yahweh. Some examples are given that might require them that go to the, to go to the next level of authority. All right, Here, here's one, guilt for bloodshed. Or blood for blood, as the King James Version says. Um, that there's not enough evidence for the local judges to determine what or who is guilty in a matter concerning manslaughter or murder or an injury inflicted that left the person invalid. All right. They just can't find what the evidence. They, they got to take it to somebody else to look at it. All right. Another is one judgment or another. Or as the King James Version says, between plea and plea. That is, there are two or more possible judgments that could be rendered for a charge. And the local judges cannot decide which judgment should be rendered. Or there are two possible punishments that could be rendered in a judgment. Or as the King James says, stroke or stroke. And the local judges cannot settle on which punishment to administer. The last example given is a controversy within the gates, meaning the village, the town, or the city. This would be a matter of strife between families, that could be it, or it could be concerning a skin ailment or a mold issue or any other matter that could affect the health of the community. <clears throat> These situations and any other similar to them that the local judges could not adjudicate were to be taken to the next level of authority located in the nearest Levitical city. Once there, the matter was to be presented to the priest, the Levites, or the judge presiding there for a judgment, settlement, or pronouncement to be made. I want to make a note about the judges concerning the judges at the next level of authority. Judges, that title was the name given to early prophets of Israel chosen by Yahweh to lead the people. Some names that might be familiar to you as judges are Othniel, Deborah, Gideon, Ehud, and Samuel. They were Yahweh's representatives to the people. They rendered his judgment to the people. All right. Judgments are given. All the judgments given are apodictic in nature. They are to be followed precisely, precisely. All right. Therefore, the next command you shall do according to the sentence which they pronounce upon you in that place which the Lord chooses. And you shall be careful to do according to all that they order you are also apodictic and absolute. Why? Because the judges were administrators for Yahweh to the people and the judgment rendered by them was considered to be a judgment from Yahweh and all of his commands are absolute and are to be followed. Hence the directive, you shall not turn aside to the right hand or to the left from the sentence which they pronounce upon you. There to be no deviations, shortcuts, or altering the command set forth in the judgment decision. Remember, the judgment is God's. They're making this judgment on behalf of Yahweh. All right. Any questions? It's just amazing. When you go into a courtroom, it says, in God we trust, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And how things are done now. Um, in comparison to what we are reading and learning about is apples and oranges. Well, actually, the model for our court system is based on this. Mm -hmm. All right. It's based on this. Followed. <laughs> and, but well, like I said, it's based on this. Now, whether it's executed this correctly, 
is a whole nother thing, but it's based on this where you, you start at the lower court and you can take it to a higher level in order to get adjudication for a particular plea. All right. Um, but this, by the same token, in this case, the Lord spirit rested on the people doing the judgment. That is not the case in our court system. If it's a, if, if, if the person or the judge who is doing the adjudicating is a man or woman of God, you might get justice. But other than that, it, it might not happen. <laughs> it just might not happen. Verse 12. <laughs> Good comment. I agree. I agree. <laughs> Good comment. Verse 12. It says, now the man who acts presumptuously and will not heed the priest who stands to minister there before the Lord your God or the judge, that man shall die. So you shall put away the evil from Israel and all the people shall hear and fear and no longer act presumptuously. <laughs> there are consequences to disobeying the judgments of Yahweh. The last apodictic law stated, you shall not turn aside to the right hand or to the left from the sentence they pronounce upon you. Again, there are no deviations, shortcuts, or altering the judgments of Yahweh. To do any of those things is to be disobedient. The King James Version uses the word presumptuously, which is an arrogant defiance along with disobedience. And disobedience shows dismissal, disregard, disrespect, derision, disdain, and contempt for authority, commands, and the judgments of Yahweh. So what is the punishment against those who will not follow the judgment set forth by the higher level of authority authorized by Yahweh? The word says in the verse, now that man who acts presumptuously and will not heed the priest who stands to minister there before the Lord your God or the judge, that man shall die. So you shall put away the evil from Israel. This reminds me when Yeshua, Jesus said in Matthew 18, verse 8 and 9, if your hand or foot causes you to sin, cut it off and cast it from you. It is better for you to enter into life lame or maimed rather than having two hands or two feet and be cast into everlasting fire. And if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and cast it from you. It is better for you to enter life with one eye rather than having two eyes to be cast into hellfire. In other words, remove the poison from their midst so that the congregation may live. Do an amputation and live and be blessed. That's what Yahweh is saying to the congregation of Israel. And the results of the actions of the arrogantly defiant, presumptuous, contemptuous, disobedient person. All the people shall hear what happened to him and fear and no longer act in that manner. It was a deterrent to others from behaving like that person. And there are, there are several cases in scripture where something like that happened. There was a case in, uh, I want to say, my, I want to say it's in numbers where somebody was blaspheming the Lord and they took that person before the judge and then they stoned them to death to let them know you're not going to get away with certain things. You're just not going to get away with it. There's some things that are um, punishable by death and they are going to remove the the evil from inside the congregation all right as the writer of hebrews reminds us in hebrews 10 verses 30 and 31 vengeance is mine i will repay says the lord and again the lord will judge his people it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living god and every judgment that came from his judges or from his priests or from the levites was a judgment from god okay the overall message of this lesson is as Jeremiah 38 verse 20 says, please obey the voice of the Lord, which I speak to you. So it shall be well with you and your soul shall live. Amen. In the same way, Jesus, Yeshua told us in John 14 verse 15 and then 21. If you love me, keep my commandments. He who has my commandments and keeps them. Is he who loves me and he who loves me will be loved by my father and I will love him and manifest him, manifest myself for him. Remember to do this. Love the Lord because Yeshua, Jesus says in Matthew 7 verses 21 to 23, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my father in heaven 
Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name and done wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you depart from me. You who practice lawlessness. Lawlessness is anything that is contrary to the commands of Yahweh. Either the commands given by him or by his son, Yeshua, Jesus, our king. So we got to be mindful. We live a life of obedience. And if we live a life of obedience now, we will always be sensitive to what the Holy Spirit will tell us to do. And we will always be sensitive and obedient to do what he would tell us to do. All right. Any questions? Any comments? Because that's my lesson, y'all. That's my lesson. Any questions? Any comments? Okay, we're done. Praise the Lord. All right. Um, I need somebody to pray us out. I'm gonna pick on somebody to pray us out. You wanna pray? You got a question, Darlene? Yeah, I have a question. Go ahead. The question was that um, where did the judges um get appointed from again? How did they get appointed? The, the lower judges. Okay. Well, I don't the quite understand that. All right. So when when they were in when they were at Mount Sinai. Moses, Jethro came to visit Moses. I'm going to tell this story real quick. Jethro came to visit Moses and he sat down to judge the people. And Jethro saw what he was doing and told him it wasn't good. He told him that he needed to, it was too much for him, that he needed to appoint people to help him in the judgment. All right. That he needed to appoint people to be ruled, to judge people of 10 sets of 10 families, then sets of 10, 50 families, then sets of hundred families, then sets of a thousand families and then if there was anything that came up the ranks through that then they would bring it to Moses so all the small matters they would um they would judge and then Moses would judge the great matters all right but the but when you read it I want to say it's in Exodus that he called 70 elders with the qualities that um Jethro had said and the Lord said bring them to the tent of meeting and I will take some of the spirit that's on you and put it on them. So the 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 suggestions was given by Met by Jethro, approved by Yahweh, and then the judges were established while they were in the wilderness. That's where it came from. It was established in the wilderness because there were many disputes and problems. You got a lot of people, there's always gonna be something going on, some kind of disagreement, some kind of something going on. And so they would bring in all of these petty grievances to, to Moses. And Jethro said, this is not good. Let, let the lesser judges handle those little things. And you handle the great matters. And that's how the judges were set up. Okay. 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 And they're just taking that concept that they set up in the wilderness into the promised land with them and setting it up in their various different towns and villages. Okay. All right. All right. Any other questions? Any other questions? Any other comments? Okay, awesome. All right. Um, I'm gonna need somebody to pray us out. I'm gonna need somebody to pray us out. Let's see, let's see. Who am I pick on? I'm gonna pick on Mama Connie. Mama Connie, can you pray us out? Yes, yes. Amen. Yes. Thank you. Good morning. <clears throat> Oh, Heavenly Father, God, Lord, we come to you this morning, humbly as we know how. We come to you with all petitions and thanks and gratitude and all how we thank you, we praise you, we glorify you, we magnify your name, and we thank you for sitting on high. Heavenly Father, God, Lord, we thank you for this opportunity that we have to come and learn about your word on Sundays and thank God for how you continuously, we thank you, God, for how you continue to use Minister Dolores um, to Teach us what we need to know about your word. God, we thank you for this opportunity. God, I want you to continue to cover everyone on this line and keep a hedge of protection around them at all times. God, we give you the most highest praise. We tell you hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Good prayer, Ma. Thank, thank you. you.